Holy shit, we're ready. We're doing everything. Okay, and action. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> I don't know why I chose to do the clap this time. Welcome to the MJ38 show. Episode number four. I don't know. We're going to figure that out eventually. Four Either down, way, baby. We One keep more moving. Down. We keep moving. Welcome in. Hopefully your day is going amazing. Your night's going yes. amazing. It's our night for us. It's our nighttime. We're kind of out of our regimen, but we're back on Thursdays. Night mode. Welcome in. I'm not sure when you're listening to this, but hopefully you kick today's ass. I hope you did kick today's ass. That is kind of what I'm always asking everybody at the end of the day. Yeah, it's always a good little intro sentiment. <laughs> yeah. How was, did you get the dub today? Is, is today going dub, dub worth? Did you dunk dub or get dunked on? <sighs> it's one or the other. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully all your dogs are dunking on people. <laughs> Hopefully it's like one dog doesn't gets dunked on because then that means like if everybody's dunking on everybody for too long of a period of time, I start to get nervous. But like if a cut. Oh if, man. <laughs> We're due. <laughs> We're due for a drop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm doing a bit. When things are good, things are good. But yeah, there's usually mm-hmm. like a couple people. It's like they're, you know, you got to help them get through a season, and then you help them get through the season, and then we're we're gone. Yeah, this life is like really like seasons, like straight up like shows. Or like, yeah, like, yeah, like series of events, collections. Yeah, because we could be talking about fall, spring, August, but like it's not mm-hmm. quite like a TV show, like season one, season two, season three. Yeah, but it's like, like people are in your life for like. Um, what like a season a reason or a lifetime yeah it's yeah. like that kind of season is what we're talking about mm. like uh yes a season of life a season of life when you had this thing or where you lived at this place or, or where you drove that car you worked that job you, you worked that job yeah. yes for real that's a big season yeah or there's also like management like regimes changes like yeah. oh yeah when he was the manager when he was running things yeah th- when it was, I was like under this. this guy yeah i remember that guy he sucked <laughs> yeah that shit was butt yes. now things are better or it's the other way things were better now they're butt Oh, you gotta watch out for all of those. Everything can happen. I mean, you don't have to watch out for anything, I guess. But <laughs> live your life. Yeah, just do what live. you want. <laughs> Keep on getting your paper. Rihanna, <laughs> Tia. Your life. Hey. Yeah, I love Tia. He was a like a philosophical rapper, and that struck me at an early age. I feel like I haven't heard anything from him in a really long time. <sighs> he releases he released a song like two days ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What's it called? Um, we could, we should look it up to show yeah. Ti Love. Hit you, yeah, hit, get, I'll get yeah, on Spotify. Get I mean, yeah. I don't want to hate, but I also so the problem is is that Have like you heard it? I played a little bit of it and I was kind of like, uh, it doesn't play like when my top little bit. It's not bit. top back. It's not twenty falls. <laughs> what you know about it's that? It's not what you know about that. Big things popping. And I just want to. Is it even uh, no matter what? No. No matter what vein. I mean, I guess it's called The Real A. The Real A? Who's the feature? It says Young Boat, T.I., Killer Mike, Schooly. So, I get this. So, what I get from T.I. is he's kind of like doing like new wave, like really Atlanta stuff, like trying Mm -hmm. to help like Atlanta rappers, I guess, like get to the next level. Yeah. Which is super dope. Yeah. But he's also trying to find his new sound, maybe, with like being like a wise king in the game and not mm. being like the prime like yeah, I guess throat it's a killer. Role. Yeah, like you see Lil Wayne trying to be like I don't want to call them old. They're not yeah. old, but They're like older. <laughs> yeah, older. Older. Yeah. They were the greats for like nineties and the twenty like yeah, early two thousands and nineties. Yeah, at the age where like your starting quarterback might retire. But like your favorite rapper still trying to run the meta. Right. It's kind of a tough place to like see Lil Wayne, but he does a good job of it. He had that DMX song, or the song with the DMX sample came out, yeah. Can't Nobody. Mm-hmm. And he's just said some shit that's crazy. Like, yeah, he is a, yeah, Lil Wayne's a goat, for sure. For sure. 100%. I love T.I. 100% as well. Yeah, yeah me But too. I think he's trying to push in a new, not, not push in a new direction himself. Does he have a, a verse on the song? Because I guess it was, a, I'm sure he does. I think he does, yeah. Because I've also heard what his, several. I flows like. I guess I'd listen to it and get back to y'all on that. Yeah. But I guess, because uh, I guess. Overall, the song does sound like New Wave. Definitely more. That song is New Wave, but I've also heard other new T.I. songs in the last like month or two, or like six months. He's released a couple songs. And okay. every time I go to play that song, it's just like not slapping my face off. Okay. Yeah, and it makes me sad, because I'm like, T.I. was like... Well, slap me. I still listen... <laughs> That's all we want. Slap me, Just please. slap me in the face. <laughs> give me with a slap. Yeah, and get me out of this hating. I'm not trying to hate it on Ti. I'm not. I love that guy to death. Okay. He was like, when I first started listening to rap, I was like, it's hard when the song is about something that you're not about, or like, especially as a kid, you can't be about what a lot of hip hop was about, like being in the club or throwing money or like, you know, fucking yeah. bitches or yeah. like doing drugs, Having whatever, guns. smoking weed. Yeah, you're 13, 14. <laughs> 
15, 16 years it, old. It's hard to relate, but the beats are crazy, and the verses are crazy, and the swag is crazy. Like, I'm rocking with all that to the max. Yeah, I love the, yeah, the, the energy behind it. Yeah, the way it made me feel was crazy. Mm. And then, like, the first hip song, that hip hop song that made me go, like, bananas was Through the Wire mm. by Kanye West. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I heard Dirt Off Your Shoulders, and that was one of the first hip hop songs that I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. This is, dude, Nickelback is ass. I never heard anything like this. Realm <laughs> yeah, open. seriously. And then it went from there to I heard through the wire, and I was like, "Oh, hip hop is super crazy." Mm-hmm. It goes from that to that. What the fuck? And then like it kind of opened up, and then I actually started to understand what the fuck was going on. So, but then when I was in that phase of discovery, and I found like Lil Wayne, and he was fire, but also Incredible. hard Incredible. to relate to. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time. But then T.I., he was, like, speaking to my spirit. I felt like he was almost... At the time, though. What do you mean? Continue what you're going to say. Well, he was just, like, able to be directly relatable, too. T.I.? Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about a lot of metaphysical stuff Mm -hmm. and a lot of, like, spiritual stuff. Okay. The other thing that that ties into what I was going to say is, like, uh, I think we were attracted to it at that time. Or, like, regardless, we were attracted to it. And I think at that time, we couldn't really understand the depths and the nuances that were going on. But listening to it now, it's like, oh, I see, like... There's so much more to this song than like initially. I would you're just kind of like literally vibing to it. You're just like, <laughs> yeah, true. Literally rocking. I, like, a I bit. fuck with this. This is like yes, like I could like live here with this. Yeah. And then like when you listen to it later, I guess you could either discover that like oh man, I was into some weird shit, <laughs> <laughs> or you could be like man, this shit held true through the whole thing. Like, I still love this song. There's still truth in the song. There's still nuances I'm still finding and bars that I didn't even understand the true meaning of. When the That's doors crazy. open up, they open, open up. up. Yep, we were talking about how there's still bars that you, at 28 years old, you're like, oh, that's what the fuck you was talking about. That's crazy. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. saw a car with the butterfly doors. It's like when they open up, I literally they saw open the, up. The door, the door opened upward. Yeah. yeah. Your doors opened out. That one opened that upward. Way. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's what he's talking that's about. Lit. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It's dope. Yeah. So, yeah, there's just some hip hop is. But, but uh, I guess to, 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 there are like the, the metaphysical things that like I guess you're referring to with T.I as well yeah and i wondered if like there's a balance between rapping corny and like rapping spiritually and gospel Mm -hmm. and then rapping like super hard and in my mind it's just like ti was that music's timeless no matter what it's timeless but also top back is timeless he was that's what i'm saying is he was fucking diff dog he was like barry sanders (laughs) in that bitch and i'm like i want to see him tote that rock it was bo jackson (laughs) and he had the speed it was both Mm. And that was nuts. Like flowers for Ti. That's what I was on my dogs. Yeah, Lil oh, Wayne's yeah. crazy because his his creative capacity just still blows me away. He's like, I'm not, I don't, I can't even. I could never do his bits, but the way Lil his Wayne. mind works is like, I'm over here with the rap, and then like I'm over here, and then it's always like a surprise. It's very like a joke almost, like a good mm-hmm. a good punchline. A good punchline. Yeah. yeah, his punchlines are sick. Uh-huh. And then he just bounces off. He's like, the door handles is Adam Sandler. I opened up and found a candle. <laughs> ah. Like, it's like everything's like, he does wordplay within itself and he hits punchlines at the same time. Mm. And so you're able, you're just like following him. Boom, got him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Boom, got him. And then he says some shit that no one, no one plays with your mind like that. Mm. I feel like that's what makes him great is like, he's like a poet in that sense where people don't like have fun. Like a comedian has fun with your brain like that, where they make you think things that are like, Oh, Bring you yeah. along. And, yeah. Like this way, this way, this way. Oh, there's that thing. <laughs> yeah. Remember that thing I told you about? <laughs> yeah. Got you back there. You remember yeah. it was all working together. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's something appreciative about that in their art. And I feel like that's also what made them like timeless. What made them goat like mm-hmm. is that they did that thing really transcend well. Time, or not transcend time. I guess trans- transcend time in a way. Cause time is finite. In a way, but if it's like, nah, that that's just not. Nah, that shit's <laughs> that shit's forever, dog. I've been listening to that for like fifteen years. Forever, that's crazy. A lot of people have been doing that. I think it's like super common that like uh, people typically continue to listen to the music that they were listening to whenever they were in their developmental years, like twenty or maybe like late teenage, early twenties. Like the music you were listening, maybe even a little bit earlier than that, like fifteen, sixteen. Like from that point forward, I think like people continue to listen to that or those artists for sure. And that type of music is usually if they're if they are going to step out of that bounds of their normal what they listen to, they're, it's going to be something kind of similar to that. Usually, yeah, like your parents still listen to eighties music still, or like yeah, like my uncle Sean, my uncle, my older uncle, my oldest uncle. Yeah. Is he like he's still just Depeche Mode, bro? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
I just I just upset a lot of a large demographic of our audience. My aunt is gonna be furious. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying though is that you would think that there's 80 music isn't it's called the 80s music. It's not like a genre that still is ongoing. I mean, like it's like love songs, you know. Uh-huh. And those are still ongoing for sure. But it, that sound is so unique to that era. It's kind of unique, yeah. And the people that grew up to that sound just want to hear that sound. I think that's why it gives. That was everybody though. Yeah, it's not they, like specifically for those people. No, right? no, no, that was just easily identifiable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah sure. a lot, I think a lot of people get for stuck sure. on like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or the Foo Fighters. There's that like alternative rock like mm-hmm. diehards I've seen. Or like people that still see Metallica and oh, stuff absolutely. like that, yeah. Yeah, Metallica goes off. I want to see Metallica one day. <laughs> just for what? Why? Just for just for because I think they they're like regarded as like one of like the the goats. Yeah, the goats in the rock game. To see a goat play. Goats. Yeah, they cross like like yeah. They're, they're just referred to goat very threshold. highly. And my, yeah, my mom has seen them many a time, and I'm sure she would love to see them with me, or love me to see them with her. That would be an experience. Doing stuff with yes. your parents is like makes a difference. They too. go off too because like I like I think there's like a. The same way that there's some timeless uh, elements in regards to music, like hip hop music or any music really uh, that we were kind of talking about with like stuff that you liked in the past and like you listen to it and be like, ah, that was kind of whack. Or like, oh no, there's some gold there. And I found some gold. I stumbled into some gold somehow. Thank God I was attracted to that thing and listened to it on repeat. <laughs> yeah. yeah <I laughs> there was a good that. message in there. There was. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a positive influence. And uh, if you're not, I lost it again. <laughs> Being so inspired by Metallica. Oh yeah, they're one of the goats because I think that they do the same thing that like the timeless effect within some, like a, a song could also be across genres as well. It's like art. You could appreciate all kinds of art if you like music. You know, it's like people like Bob Marley. Like my mom likes Bob Marley and like Logic and like Drake and like, like, Big, like Big Sean, like that kind of stuff. And like, but mostly like like uh, rock, like Slipknot, Disturbed, Metallica, Corn. <laughs> word yeah that's Nine a specific nails. sound so she was she coming up when they were popular yes exactly so that's always gonna be a lock for you mm. i think that's like i'll probably be locked with drake forever that's, that might be what i always think like good hip-hop sounds like because mm. that was like my era of like i was in high school when thank me later came out yeah and then college when just hold on we're coming home came out so i'm kind of like locked into like mm. that pretty much yeah and i think that if i were to like listen to some metallica songs and like because i already know a couple of them but like listen to, to more of it and like my mom showed me, like show me the greats, mom. Show, run me your one through ten Metallica playlist real quick, like on repeat while we go to this concert. Yeah, yeah. And then like by the time I get there, I bet I could have an amazing time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Because you need to know some of the words. That is I think. part of it. It, it is a part of the experience. I wouldn't enjoy it as much just being like um, you're outside of the you're bubble. You're an observer. You're a pure observer. If you know the words, you're a participant. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Big difference. I guess you can you can take yourself from pure observer to participant just from being a vibe. At least willing to look like a fool because you don't because you don't know the words. <laughs> yeah, at least you're just like vibing. Yeah, just vibe, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a thing. You can but do that. I agree with you. Is that but knowing the words makes a difference for me? For sure. It's for like being well. at a casino and not gambling. It's like yeah, you can be in a casino and check it out. I mean, you, you <laughs> walk can, around. Yeah, I guess you could sit at the table and do watch someone smell play. Cigarette smoke. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah i want to go to a show but then that's the argument for going to like an edc or like a big event with a bunch of people that you don't know that's another thing too is I like that's a little different a festival brings the experience of the festival with it mm-hmm. so you that that makes more sense to go to that thing you're not going to the show for the people you don't know you're going to the festival which yes. is which is seeing people you don't know mm-hmm. so that's different yeah it's kind of like acl yeah to some degree people get down with that mm-hmm. but either way i think that'd be a great time but yeah, I think there is elements of music that are timeless and like transferable or like unknockable regardless of where you stand. Yeah. It's like that like Metallica, they're one of the goats. You might yeah. not like all their songs, but like they're one of the goats. I'm sorry. There's something to take away from that. They're in there. There's something to watch, there's something to see. Mm-hmm. It's not bullshit. Not bullshit. Yeah. Because yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I liked I liked rock growing up. I liked yeah, Metallica, because yeah, that was what kind of what my mom was listening to. And like Sublime and stuff too, that back in the early, early days. Yeah. But yeah, eventually I like Lincoln Park was my shit. Yeah, because I feel like listening. I listened to it the other day, and like yeah, I'm like I stumbled into some gold, bro. This is this this is bro. I was fucked up. I was <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> what, what, what did it do to you? Just listen to the whole album, or like yeah, listen to like all the songs, and I was like, oh my god, these songs pop off, or like <laughs> I don't know. I just loved it, and I loved the thinking the, about I, yourself being a kid. Like not even that per se, just like like the feeling it gave me. I was like, oh man. That's so nice. I love these songs. And they still sounded good. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is so catchy. Or like, this is so, like, it was correct for this to be, like, presented as, like, this is, like, good good music. This is good art. Yeah. This is good shit. Damn, like, that's oh, crazy. Okay. 
This is good shit. It's not bad. It's nice going back to back and appreciating art as an adult too, because yes. it, you get to see what you saw as a kid, and you get to see what as a, I think as an adult you get to see what it really is. Mm-hmm. And a, little, then, a little more true, ref, truly refined version for sure. Yeah, now that you kind of like know what the fuck's going on and what people yeah, actually like, mean, like, is this really good? Yeah, you know. And as a kid, I don't even know what they're saying. Like a lot of oh, times, no idea, no, no idea. fucking clue, no idea what the words like the the true meaning behind the words. It's yeah, like, speaking like. You just like love a Spanish song, you know what I'm saying? The <laughs> Hondo song is like, "Yo quiero mi amor." <laughs> yeah, that is exactly. You have no clue what's going like, on what there. The, what the, I love the way it sounds. But... Yeah, I'm just screaming that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, that's exactly. And then my mom would be like, "Do you even know what like Kaluga is? Do you know what Kaluga caviar? Like, I don't think you know what that is. Like, have you ever seen a bottle of Dom Perignon? Yeah. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I had no clue what the fuck I was talking about when I was rapping a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But then it's nice to go back because then I'll hear I hear like uh, like Thank Me Later is a good example of just l- listening to that album as an adult, and I was just like, oh yeah, even in high school I had no clue what the fuck this was about. Oh yeah, no idea, not at all, not the true extent. And then now I just listen to it as an adult, and I'm like, this shit was gas, man. Like yes. Over is a great song. Mm-hmm. Like even now I was like, and I'm running through it's the city with my high beams on. <laughs> Can you see me? Can you see me? Get your visine on. He goes in as fuck. Like, I love it. And it's so cool looking at him as an artist and being like, okay, he, when he was young, he went crazy. Like, that means I'm young in my career. I can go crazy, like, just right now. Crazy. Yeah, just go you crazy. You can make timeless music at any time. Yes. That's a crazy thing. That's a hard thing to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. But I think you get there in your artistry where you just, like, understand what is timelessness mm-hmm. and what is, like, what makes a classic. Do your best to, uh, yeah, your best... <laughs> Attempt, your, yeah, your best painting. Just, just make it, bro. You can paint the Mona Lisa tomorrow, bro. Tell them. <laughs> Fucking tell them, bro. Tomorrow. Not tomorrow, bro. It's like your best effort of encapsulating your feeling right now. Just mm-hmm. like, boom. Like, you just do it. You, I don't. I think it's like ritual rain dance your way there, bro, with some crazy hot block charging dog. <laughs> it is like, like looking at the winks and like coming to the forks in the road and choosing the right way multiple times in a row. If you hit like 70 forks in a row... You're in a much different and place than if you missed himself. one and at any point back before the 70th. You would have missed one at any point down by, I guess, but before, you know, the 70th fork, it's like compound interest. And you're stacked up that high. And you're stacked. And it makes your energy just be tweaking, bro. <laughs> you turn into a lightning rod and, yes. you're, and you're trying to do a rain dance. Yeah. That, and you can rain dance your way into the Mona Lisa, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. We were watching John Wick and my dad was like, if you didn't have a job, would you get up at six in the morning like that? And I was like, it depended on what I was trying to do. It depended on my, yeah, on my schedule. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, actually, if I didn't have a job, probably yes. With a job, it's much harder to get up at 6 a.m. Because I got to mm-hmm. like get sleep when I can get sleep. But if I had no job and I just wanted to feel hard as fuck all the time and train like a motherfucker, like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. I lived back at that at that one cement place. I lived at, uh, I was working, I was I lived in that life. I lived like for multiple, maybe over a year for sure. But I was going to say multiple years, I was maybe a year and a half to two years of like waking up at. 4 a.m. Yeah. And just like going. Like my day is over by 3 o'clock. <laughs> I have from 3 o'clock until I go to sleep. I guess I want to go to sleep is like around like 10 ish. Damn, 10-ish. son. You probably are you sleepy at that point? Yeah. It's a different life I'm because tired. you're tired at that point. I'm you tired. can just pass out. Mm-hmm. That's fire. It was lit. Because the other thing about that is that it's hard to do. It's fucking hard to do. So like putting yourself through something that's difficult to do, like earning your own respect is a big part of that rain dance. Mm-hmm. It's like, you have to be convinced that you deserve it. You have to see what you can do. Yeah, push your limits. Yeah. That was, that was more or less like what, what I took away from it. I was like, oh, I'm not afraid of, like, and this, and also working in the place where we're working at now, I'm getting out super late sometimes. Like, when I was doing that for over a year plus, like a year and a half, like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm not afraid to wake up super, super early at 4 a.m. to start my day, and I'm not afraid to go into the depths of the night and stay up all night if I have to, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell so, so, like, kind of in your 20s, I think that's a good time to do that as well. Yeah. But I think I did. I guess the job, pres- or yeah, that job was formatted in a way that it was kind of easily, or it was, it was kind of motivating because I guess I had to be at the at the spot around six thirty or seven. I guess eventually I pushed it to seven, mm-hmm. but I was like, well, I can get my workout in before that, and if I did that, then, then I would have all day. Yeah, I would have all day. It'd be over. Yeah, and like I guess like, it, that stems from the idea of like just knock the workout out, knock yeah. it, kill it, kill it. You gotta pay it's the nothing. man. Just you gotta pay, pay the man. You're gonna do it. The other part is dreading it all day is so much worse. And I guess the other part is making yourself come to the fact, come to the place of you're going to do it, you know, or you know you're going to do it. 
That's a different thing. You trust yourself. You know your word. You know, like when you tell yourself you're going to do it tomorrow morning. I would, I would rather knock it out in the morning. Oh, and, and mean that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have to fall through on that. that's diff. That's yeah. diff. And then when it, I feel like when you're trying to rain dance, you're trying to like get things to swing your way, or you're trying to win in a season of life. You have to be diff. You gotta like hold yourself you to do some different shit to get for some real. different results. Yes, yes. Say it twice for the people in the back. For the people in the back, one time. Do different shit to get different results. For real, make it make a different mistake. Start with that. Yeah. Be like, but it, but regardless, that's what I'm saying. I think the regimen of that pressure, I think earning your own respect, like making right de- the right decisions makes yourself feel worthy. And that gives you access to that, that actions and the brainwaves of someone who would have it. Yes. Yeah. But when you that. don't respect yourself because you're not actually saving your money and you're not actually like committed. It, sometimes it's just like being punctual for me was a lot of it. It's like committing myself, like being all the way in looked like me showing up to work on time. It's like, and then eventually got to where I was just like early every day, so much so that people forgot that I was ever somebody that nobody knows I used to be late. Nobody. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's in a different person. You're a different person. Yeah. Because I want a different life. And so this, I got to do different stuff. You have your own story. And then there's also a societal script or like, who are you in this play as well? Because you're also an individual for sure. You're, you are, you exist. You were here. You go to sleep. You wake up. Whatever that means. Oh, but yeah. You do that for sure. Yeah. And like, that's an individual thing that goes on, but like then you have to play with others. There are other people, so many other people, and other things, animals and shit. Fuck plants. Yeah. Weird things going on there. Yeah. I have to engage with dogs for sure. Yes. For sure. I love my dog. I love he's my dog awesome. So much. He makes it easy. Yeah, he's so sweet. But that is a part weird nuance of this game that we're playing, which Super is weird. just like be a person. Why do I have a dog? Or like, <laughs> why do I love an animal so much? <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. It's, it, it's unconditional. Partially, and like he doesn't. I like. I, there, there are points in life, not in life. I've only had him for I guess a couple, like a year and a half, maybe, maybe a year and change. But like, uh, there are times when I've been like, man, you don't have to worry about like anything, except for like, like me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like there's nothing like we just gotta feed you and take you out, make sure you're good, like give you all your stuff, like all the stuff you need. Yeah, and you're fine. Like you don't get, you don't care, you don't care about anything. That's and like, it's, it's unconditional. Every time I walk home, no matter how my day was, no matter what, no matter what the script was, or how the day played out, he's just like, Hur. that's tight. We appreciate that relationship. That, yeah. 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 I guess that, that's probably where the, the love, that's, that's why I can love an animal so much. I'm trying to, I, maybe just an animal just represents like a relationship just like on base level. Mm-hmm. It's like a relationship without the other human involved. Like, literally something that will just love you no matter what. It just loves you. Like, so it's literally all on you to just have a relationship skill. <laughs> That's why we love dogs so much is they're great relation. We And I think we want practice. Mm-hmm. Like, you're in, a bunch of, you're in a bunch of relationships whether you want to be or not. And then I'm mm-hmm. sure that you want to be in them even if you're a cynical fuck. Like, you, you have to engage in these relationships. Yes. And, well and, and, a, and a lot of them are for your benefit. Huh. And then, like, if you suck at being in relationships, then, like, that's annoying. I'm sure it hurts. Like, you don't – nobody wants to not have reciprocated love and feel like the – I think even if you don't know what a good relationship looks like, a dog gives you an opportunity to develop your relationship skill and you feel what it would feel like if you could have a good relationship, like, with a person. Mm-hmm. And on a subconscious level, we love for that. sure. I think so. I think that hits – I think that hits home. Yeah, I think that's what's going on there. Because, yeah. like, you have to love it. You have to feed it. You have to do your part. You have to, like, show it attention. Take and... care of it to the best of your degree. Yeah, even or when you're whatever, tired or however, even when yeah. you don't want to. However you see fit. Yeah. They're annoying or they're <laughs> pissing you off. Yeah, they're messing up. Like, you still have to, like, keep it alive. Paint on the Christmas tree. Yeah. Fucking, dude, dogs cool are crazy. Shit. I don't even want to think about crazy dogs. <laughs> I don't even want to bring that injury into my life. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, dogs can be vicious. As well. That's crazy as well. Because, like, I could love this animal, but it could be, like, if, if like, the, because he's, he's my dog. He's Cosmo. He's a little boy. He's a little Moby boy. Yeah, and, like, dog. but, like, if you were to, like, take out the Moby boy and just, like, turn up the instinct in the animal, it's like, I think he could probably kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, it'd be close. I'd give him a run for his money. I'd, I'd, I'd get an eyeball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely tough. get an eyeball. He would have to get lucky. He'd have to have first strike and, like. He would have to be running at me full speed. Yeah. Or chasing me down or something. But or if he, I can get on top of him quick, or I don't know, who God knows. <laughs> we just seen a video of a dog attack, or like like a like dog like chasing like a one of the army guys in like those big ass marshmallow suits. Yes, definitely seen that. <laughs> those German shepherds are ripping your dog, dude. Yeah, your true, dog. dog. There's not a lot of hope. So if you turn up the intensity all the way to wolf, it's like, 
Yeah. That's probably what our ancestors had, had, ancestors had to deal Fuck. with. Fuck. It's a good adversary. I think I might be able to take him down. Yeah. <laughs> I would wear his pelt back and he's fucking his blood. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. That probably happens. I just like kind of felt that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would wear the pelt and like, and I would definitely come back to the campsite looking fucking hard. And you probably wouldn't talk much. My ancestors were probably like cold, bro. <laughs> Ice in their veins. Ice. No, no cap. I feel that with the Derek Wolf interview on Joe Rogan. Like, yeah, there's yeah, stuff yeah, in yeah. your ancestry DNA that you could just tap into sometimes. Mm. And Derek, Joe Rogan has a podcast. I'm sure you've heard of it. Derek Wolf is a linebacker. defensive end. Defensive end. He's play, played in the NFL. I didn't know this either. He was like the number one defensive end for the 10 years straight and won a Super Bowl with Payne Manning and played for the Raiders. He's like a franchise player for the Raiders. Never heard that. Never heard of his name before. He was, I, I had seen his, he was definitely like, you know when they No have, disrespect. No, no I disrespect. Lo- I love a defensive player. He was a, I under, love a man that hits hard. Under the radar guy for sure. But like when they showed the Superman people like for Sunday Night Football, Raiders versus Rams, it, like he would be he like one of the, the defensive superhuman guy. He's the, like, yeah, the, the Nick Bosa. And the yeah, he was like a J.J. Watt with less love. Mm. Like we were there, kind of love JJ Watt in that role, and he, he was, was just ripping. Yeah, he was like, "I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers." <laughs> like, not, not exactly like a guy you want to like on the community. Like, NFL is trying to portray this like positive image. He was a little bit darker take, but his interview on Joe Rogan is fucking wonderful. Mm-hmm. And he talks talks about like a like a sensory deprivation, psychedelic induced, like fugue dream where he like. Tapped into an old life where he was a Viking and tapped into an ancestral lifetime. Yeah, and then dealt with spiritual trauma in his life. In his, in his opinion, it's like I had trauma that was affecting me. As I was, my my thing was bent this way, or my knot was tied up way way back here. Yeah, maybe and not I, even mine, but like or whatever. I don't know how that works. I don't know either. In his <laughs> mind, it's like a reincarnation type vibe. Okay, yeah, yeah, and I it's like that. that would make sense. I'm on life nine, but back in life like two when I was a Viking, going bananas. I got betrayed by my brother, and they beheaded me. And it happened so fast, I never got my head around on that. No pun intended. Ha. <laughs> I haven't sound issues. Pardon okay, the, I think we got a fix. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the trippier thing to me was like he was thoroughly convinced. He was like, like dead on, dead accurate. Like with his word as his bond was like, no, no, no. Like my spirit had tr- trauma, and I struggled to handle my emotions. Because in a past life, I never recovered from that trauma. So I needed to go to the sensory deprivation place so I could work through that. So that I could like just be a warrior Viking now. And not be dealing with that other shit that I had going on. Jesus. It's like, that shit's crazy, brother. I don't it know. It gets deep. It's like Assassin's Creed almost. It gets deep. I've never played that game. Assassin's Creed is predicated on we have ancestral DNA stored in our like bloodline, basically. Uh-huh. In our DNA and our cells. And that you can tap into the DNA of any of your past lives. And then in Assassin's Creed, it's like your family was like um, Illuminati secret assassins mm. in the 1400s. And we need you to tap into that right now. So, but then like you get kind of lost in that world. And like the person you were then starts becoming who you are now. And it's like coming out of you. And you're going into like who you were in that DNA line. That's crazy. That's tight. Yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, I think that's true sometimes, mm-hmm. or whatever whatever your roles were. That particular guy, Derek Wolf, on that podcast, definitely thinks so. Yeah, and it makes sense. <laughs> I to was him. a Viking because he's like a fucking. His last what name is tell Wolf. Him? What the fuck you can tell that guy? He took a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you anything, sir. So it's a little improbable, don't you think? You can say the sky's purple. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> you were correct, boss. No, but I then tell that nothing. his life's so synchronistic. His last name is literally Wolf with an E. He's like, yeah, my family probably killed fucking wolves. I was wearing a wolf pelt in my dream. He's like, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. He did a 23andMe test, and his DNA went all the way back to like Scandinavia, like where the Vikings were. It's like, it's like not cabin. It, it I, I don't know, man. People are fucking nuts, man. Yeah. My dad was telling me this story about people that get knocked in the head and they'll go unconscious. And then when they come back to in the hospital, they, they're they speaking perfect Mandarin. Mm. I've told you this story before. That's crazy. But like, I want to bring it up the pod because it's like, it's nuts to me. My dad's conclusion is like, your brain is a fucking like a computer that has like storage and access to like different storage. And like, you know what you've learned and stored into files. And then you also can like, kind of tap into stuff that you've seen before but haven't really given full attention to because like your subconscious has seen it and kind of like packed it in there. Yeah. It has the file. Yeah. And you haven't really like, opened it. What What do we got on that? 
What if I pull it up? Pull it up. Pull it up. And then you'll have some kind of intuition that's like, ah, I think it's yellow. And then it's like, oh, it's yellow. You're right. And you got no fucking clue. You're like, I'm a genius. <laughs> Whatever, you know? I knew it. Yeah. But like, there's something that happens when people will get knocked in the head in a certain way and they go unconscious. In a certain spot in the head? I don't or just going unconscious? I didn't ask that question. Oh, okay. But it's like a head bump and going unconscious. It seems to be the story is they arise from their unconscious state okay. and they go to speak and it's just like, hello, my name is Matthew Millette. But imagine like, Perfect formal Mandarin. And then people are like, honey, what in the fuck? What the fuck? (laughs) In Mandarin. (laughs) And then that lady's husband is like, Deborah, I don't know a word of lick of what you just said. Doctor, what in the fuck is going on? What in the good golly fuck's going on here? (laughs) Is someone playing a trick on me? But that's what it's like. That's what I'm not like. It's funny. It's got to be crazy. It literally has to be like. Life changing. What your perception changing for sure. Your you're whole, like, what the fuck? I just learned a language. Yeah, your whole conceptualization of what the hell's going on, what's possible in life is just like uh on its head. <laughs> I could I can't even imagine. My dad was like, How am I doing this? How am I doing this? That's what all you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, what would you okay, let's play a mind in Mandarin. Game. <laughs> <laughs> what would you let's say that happened to you, right? Like access that with me right now. Like what what would you do? Like, what would you think? Like, you've just been stowed this truth that, like, first, you don't have to learn things like that. Some of those things are in here already. Mm. Like, you're speaking Mandarin. Like, what would you, I don't know what I would think in that moment. <laughs> I think that language is kind of like that in a degree, just like in general. Cause I was, uh, I think it's kind of just like, I was talking to Jesus about it at work. And it's, uh, cause I'm like, I'm trying, I'm in the process of trying to learn Spanish, you know? <laughs> I am trying. I am learning Spanish. Hell yeah! I'm getting there. Yeah, slowly but surely. I Fuck practice. Yeah. I practice the work all the time. I have Let's like go. a little app. I'm doing my thing. Yeah, and like now, I was. This levels. Everyone's trying to learn Spanish. Come yes. on, everyone's trying to learn Spanish. But you're actually like you're like you have an app and you like do it. You're like, yeah, have like with a, anything. You're like I'm gonna get one percent better today. I'll be one percent better tomorrow. Eventually, I'll get there. Exactly. That's facts. That's yeah, different yeah. than like an audiobook. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, they're trying to implement actionable things. You need to get, look, look for some actionable things and then try to implement them in the most effective way possible with your schedule. Yes. So I'm trying to learn Spanish a little bit. So I was talking to Jesus about that because he's fluent. And I'm just like, man, that's fucking crazy. Isn't that crazy? What language are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know both. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you think in a language. I think, yeah, because I think it's thought first. Yeah. I think that, that's, that, that's what I was getting to is that like, I think language is like that. You just put labels on things. And whether the label's in English or Spanish or Mandarin, you're just like, boop, this is, boop. And they're all just ideas that you're pointing to. And, and they're, they're, like, they're, the, the label's interchangeable. Yeah. So language, it was just like, English, Mandarin. <laughs> in like the language center of your mind of how you express, I guess it's like, the, what is language? Like the expression of the thought, ideas. And ideas. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Like your feelings, and, or you feel something. You, and you can express your feelings. You also cannot express your feelings. Or you can also withhold, choose yeah. to withhold your feelings A lot of people well. are bad about expressing their feelings. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a thing. Yes. So I think like, like you have the feeling, but like the idea to say something. Some people just blurt stuff out too. That You're animated to just speak sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I feel just like. Why did I say that? <laughs> with me, I'm kind of musically inclined. So I'm kind of just like. Painting the rhythm. You know what I'm saying? That, that's like, pretty natural. Turn it on and off all the time. You should, yeah, you can ask anyone in my house. <laughs> I'm singing about like everything. <laughs> Why well, I me mean, do the dishes, babe? Like, oh, I dropped that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like narrating my life in song. It's yeah, a yeah. musical. <laughs> well, because it's a rhythm. My there's life a, isn't a movie; it's a musical. There's a rhythm to everything. Uh, I tap into the rhythm of the night every night. Like, mm-hmm. my, it's easier. Like, my life is easier when I'm like whatever it is. <laughs> It's something about like the pace of the people. Like, there's like a heartbeat out there, and like you can uh-huh. just find it, and then you can like live on the heartbeat. I don't know how to explain it, mm-hmm. but I think that's what happens like at home. Or I think sometimes when we're singing, like the song you're singing is that's like the beat of your day. Like that's the song that gets stuck in your head. Today feels like a yeah, this kind of day. Yeah, and you're just like living in that vibe. And then some people get on a really like a, just a higher vibration. They're just like thumb into a little faster beat there's like mm, yeah i'm feeling that today i don't know i don't know i just notice this in people and yeah. i feel like it's like a it's a thing out there and sure. if, you, if your room's really low you've seen it when like everyone at work is tired or you all partied the last night like the hum is low it was like super super busy last night yeah everyone's and got their ass they're kind of just like sitting there like no one's got any energy like that's a very low beat it's like boom. yeah it's a slow boom, jam boom. 
You gotta mm-hmm. find a way to like mm-hmm. turn that up. You know what I'm saying? And then, but but the thing is, is that I like you to dance. Do too, you can't do it too quick. No, like I like to dance to the beat. So if the uh, beat is there, I don't want to be dancing off key, like going too much. Like, come on, turn the fuck up, everybody. Let's go! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. So like, you kind of have to find a way to be like. Hey, yeah, uh, guys, what's up? What's going on today? <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, guys, I think we got a job today. Hey, you know, uh-huh. you gotta like get, get it rocking and a little try, bit. Yeah, try to be like exactly like half or double, you know what I'm saying? So it's like on beat. <laughs> yeah. If they're down at a 60, I gotta, I'm normally at 150, but I gotta go down to 120s or at least like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm two for every one. And I'm leaving a lot of space for ad libs too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm jumping. Yeah, life's like that. Yeah. For sure. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I think dancing and singing in your house, I don't think that's weird anymore. I think like when I'm in a, uh, like at the mall, I go to the mall a lot. I don't know. What, I think mm-hmm. that's just a B. I'm a 90s kid. <laughs> and so I'll be at the mall with my headphones in and I'm just like dancing while I'm shopping. <laughs> I got no money. Yeah. I ain't spending it here. Like, <laughs> that's kind of just me. Like, <laughs> uh, And so like and then when I think about like is that weird that I just kind of like be dancing my way through the mall. I'm just like, I think it's just more na- like I, I just feel the rhythm of the of like everybody outside and what's going on right now. And then I kind of like attach a song, like I kind of feel it out. And then I'm like, this is it right here. It's like vibing now. Let's go. And then you another song will come on and it's too, this scene. it's too slow. You'll feel it. Mm-hmm. You're like, nah, it's this is not right right now. Yeah. And then you'll skip a couple times. Like, oh, this is hitting right now. This is hitting right this now. This is hitting right now. <laughs> it's like I think Jordan Peterson. Oh, Jordan Peterson mentions mentions an idea in like related to this in regards to like uh, why is it so natural for us to watch movies and then in those movies they have like music playing. You know what I'm saying? Like they they intensify or like they make they they will like, to like kind of contribute to the narrative because there is like some sort of like we just allow that where it's like okay. That's normal. Yeah, there's like, you n- know, no one's like following you around the fucking fucking way. Never. Shit, no. It never happens. <laughs> While you're walking? No. no, 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 no <laughs> like, I <Stop>. do. <laughs> Stop it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> a family guy. That's Family Guy for sure. I watch a lot of Family Guy growing up. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, man. But no, but unless you're scoring your own life, which I did a lot mm-hmm. with like music. Yeah. And then you'd be riding a bicycle on a sunset, and you're like, dude, this song's going to hit so hard. This song's going to hit so hard. <laughs> and it's like, and, and, and you're just rolling. For me, like Phil Collins in the air tonight. Like, if the sun's mm-hmm. setting, and I'm driving fast, and I'm wearing, like, sunglasses at night, and I'm feeling like, the, man, come on, dog, something in the air tonight. I'm about to be electric. It's like, that song will do it for me, where it'll, like, take me kind of, like, over the edge to, like, uh, I don't know. The elevated state. Yeah. That's all you can really describe it as. You can't describe it exactly, but nah. more. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> exactly that shit will put me up and then i'm just like yeah you just feel your vibrations like through the roof mm-hmm. yes that's it up or down bro for real and then yeah and, then, and it's because there's a score to what's going on mm-hmm. because i think there's like a like the the rain dance i think is a dance because it's like the same thing and rhythm yeah i think music mimics <laughs> that in, in in life that's why we love it so much music mimics life or like there's like a yeah you know, like a beat to life yeah you know yeah, I was describing that the other day. I was like, like crescendos and things like build up. It's like, oh <laughs> damn, what's going off? <laughs> Life is like that. Yeah. That's why music's like that, yeah. or probably to some degree. The, that's crazy. It's, it's, there's an accurate reflection in there somewhere. Yeah, for that's sure. That's nuts. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're just working and then working and working and then you keep on doing and then you you reap it, you reap it, and that's the time when everyone's like, yes. Yes, they did it. It's raining. Yeah. He made it rain. Or yeah. in this in this rain dance metaphor. That's crazy. That's tight. Life is like yeah, for sure. I think that. Yeah, so the and, tie uh, between life and music is I was just gonna bring it back to the rappers you're talking about. Because you were talking about T.I. and stuff. And yeah. Like Big Sean. Or like T.I. and Little Wayne. And yeah, like that era of music. I guess listening to stuff in high school is like really formative. And people tend to listen to that continually throughout their life. Yeah. That was more like Big Sean to me. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, yeah, Big Sean was definitely like that for me. Yeah. And I love that, like, that yeah, we, because, yeah, initially we mentioned that, like, we, we both love Linkin Park as well. Linkin yeah, Park that was, was my shit. favorite band for That a was long our favorite. We, we, we bonded on that big time. And yeah, they, for sure. They're lit, bro. We found some good shit. Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have bad taste. <laughs> yeah. Like, tight. yes. And, like, we found that because In the End was, like, the most mm-hmm. popular song on the radio. Yes. When I, when I got into, like, music listening age, mm-hmm. it was like, I got, like, a CD player for Christmas. And like a go kart, and it was like go nuts, kid. 
<laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I needed like music for my CD player. And then uh, like, yeah, in the end was tight. And then my dad had that CD. And then sometimes we'd hear that song on the radio and then he'd be like, all right, hold on. And then he'd like pull that CD out and like play it. And then I was like, this shit bangs, yo. Like, yeah. This shit bangs. And my mom would be like, what I'm telling you? We don't have to listen to all this. Come on. Like, I don't know. Cause I guess it was like hard. I guess some of it's kind of hard. I, I don't know. There's some abstract concepts in there that are maybe not appropriate for children. <laughs> <laughs> Under the age of 13. But my mom was a little worried about those. But, uh, but well, everybody, that's always music. You're always listening mm-hmm. to some shit you shouldn't quite be listening to. Come on. That, that's art. That's where you grow. Yeah, art reflects and life. If it's good, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Show your kid what's good. Be like, give your kid the skill to differentiate between what's good and what's not good. Yeah. I think my mom just didn't want to be so hard. I think oh, yeah. yeah of no, course, of course, of course. No mother wants their kid I'm, to I'm be. Being, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing the bit. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I know. I was just I'm my bad. I was swinging the bit that way on you, but I don't think it's. I was happy to be growing up listening to what I want to listen to. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yes, dog. And like, I love that because I think that hip hop, so yeah, I started out with the rock kind of game, but then I think that good is good and you kind of get pulled into whatever you're pulled into for whatever reason, kind of like God's plan or God's story or whatever. Or like, you're just attracted to it for whatever reason. It, it grips you. <laughs> whatever, you. Whatever you like, you like. Yeah, they're speaking your truth. <laughs> whatever. Or... And like, we found that in hip hop. And I think that I love hip hop, I guess music in general, but love hip hop because I think that with, I guess it's probably true on both the general scale and on the specific hip hop scale. But I think that truth is. That like it's all like food. It's like even within the rap game, it's like there's so many different types of food. You know what I'm saying? Like Chinese food, American food, Mexican food, like South American food, Asian food. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like it takes like each chef, you know, is like a different brings their own something to the table. They bring their own baza. They're <laughs> like like Gordon Ramsay and like Chef Blaze and then oh, I forget the lady's name. But like we're watching Next Level Chef and like all three of them bring something like individually different to the table. You know what I'm saying? That's like just all their them. palates and all their tastes are like I guess their palates and like their uh, preparation and like the, the way their mind works with food. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm that's trying to get my head. We around. all the same ingredients here. We yeah. all the same ingredients to choose from. But like they can't make what the other person would make. Mm-hmm. They, they would all have the same ingredients to choose from and would all make like three different menus. But I just right? mean like literally on a skill level. Oh, like, yeah, they make the same exact dish. Yeah, you're not them. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm me. So, like, I'm going to make this because, like, they're at that level with it. Uh-huh. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, they go in. But, like, yeah, I think music is like that. And, like, even within specific subcategories of music, it gets like that even, too, if you want to break it down further. Because it's like, there's so many different types of music. It's like, yeah, it's country, rap, techno, rock, heavy metal, whatever, dubstep. Right. All the different shish. And, like, it's all different kinds of food. And then, like, within the rap game, it's like, there's, like, Meek Mill, Migos, Drake, Big Sean, Logic. Like DMX, like you know what I'm saying? Like there's different varieties within, even within that. And they're all different chefs, like across the board. Yeah. And I was thinking about that because, yeah, we, we watch a lot of cooking shows. Like Next Level Chef is one of them with like yeah, Gordon Ramsay and uh, I forget the other two names. I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. Okay. Gordon Ramsay's the main guy because I watch a lot of Hell's Kitchen. I'm there's sorry. people that are excited. He brought me know. in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love Hell's That's Kitchen. That's your guy. Hell's Kitchen's the shit. Hell's Kitchen was amazing. Even just as a it's kid, right. it's we fine. would sit down and watch that show. Yeah, because it's like craftsmen. Yeah. Who's the best craftsman? Yeah. <laughs> and like, they're all being judged by like the craftsman craftsman. And everybody cooks. So that's the other thing is like, it's super relatable. Yes. You're like, yes. And then yeah, watching someone be like really good at it. Yes. This ball. Dude. That, that part's crazy. Do unbelievable things. And I guess the, the thing, the more thing that I drew further out from that is like, uh, it takes, cause like they'll have, you have 45 minutes for this challenge and your time begins now. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, we're going. Ah, da, 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 da. And, like, that time's going to end. And then they have to, here you go, here's my dish. Yeah. And then they're like, mm, could use some work. Could really use some work. Damn. Underwhelming. Damn. Underwhelming. Oh, my <laughs> heart. <laughs> and it's like, that's like a song. Yeah, I was like watching it. I was like, that's like, a, like boop. And it was like, eh, pass. That, that's. Ah! <laughs> I just spent so much time on this in the kitchen. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> that's what I would, that's why I didn't want to, like, Drag Ti over the coals because oh. I just like no I'm like ah oh, those songs for me were like not nah, I underwhelming that's fine yeah but it, it breaks my heart though you know what I'm saying it's a heartbreaking thing it's like ah unfortunately so unfortunately so and like uh, in Hell's Kitchen you just get eliminated true but Ti he's a legend so he can do whatever he wants <laughs> yeah but yeah I was just like drawing that analogy I was like oh man it's like the same thing or like whenever you. You just have to make it. You do it. You're like you're just making the dish, and then like the the song is like the what's on the plate. You know, it's like here you go. All that time, all that preparation, all that thought of like the the maze that is cooking. Yeah, 
it is the timing of cooking what the, what goes with what flavor profiles it's, it gets everything gets like that everything gets so deep that is crazy my brain does start working like that too with just like flows when i hear just depending on if it's a piano or if it's a lot of beats or like my the way my brain's writing it takes into everything into account like what kind of sound we're hearing and then what like the hook is rapping about and then like everything i'm going to say is like kind of just all based on all of those factors going in and it kind of like constrains what you're going to do like you start with like anything and then you Mm -hmm. get like just based on the vibes around you or how you felt that day when you sat down to write that song is going to be some of the constraint because you can only really write about what you're feeling in my opinion so i don't know do you think that it's like draw you can draw comparisons across the board to everything and craftsmanship just like that where that's like the vibe of the draw or draw what comparisons or i guess specifically the nuance of the constraint i guess that's the the constraint draw like drives the art constraint i think so yeah right yeah then the constraint drives the art? Yeah. The whole time? Yeah. It's like the rules of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy that's how things work. So, like, yeah, things are different, but they're not. Mm-hmm. It looks like they're a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. But, but, but there's, there's, thing, there's other meta things. Yeah. That are the commonalities. Like more true underneath. Yeah. It looks like this on the surface level. But you just got to kind of dig underneath sometimes. And we just love craftsmanship because it's like the development of yeah. whatever the metaphysical thing is to, mm-hmm. like, an elite level. Yeah, it's like everything has its intricacies. Like that, that's just like a fact. <laughs> everything has its nuances. It's like whether you go into like yeah, food or wine or making things or whatever. Anything yeah. really. That's beautiful. You can, you can make things super, super, super like technical if you really want to with like in regards to whatever. Yeah. Like the grain of the wood on this Yeah, making table. the tables, like the shading, like how should we gradient this? Yeah. How should we cut this? How should we stain this? <laughs> you can get How tall should we? Should we be a little taller? <laughs> you can be crazy <laughs> complex. Yeah, what, what's the maximal... Capacity space. Like, what's like the most common household Can you dining room? <laughs> I'm already going. <laughs> He's in his bug, dude. Yeah, that was. Those were all questions somebody asked at mm-hmm. some point in time. They get paid to ask those questions. Yeah, and have those meetings. And it's just for us. It's just table. Mm-hmm. And that's like a People lot. People need of tables. Yeah. All right. Let's make tables. All right. Boom. <laughs> what kind of tables? Why? What's the purpose of a table? <laughs> Am I a table? <laughs> People just put things on me. <laughs> You're either sitting at the table or you are at the table. Yeah. Or no, For real, I... that's hard. <laughs> da, 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 da. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I think I think Drake described he's like, uh, how you how you gonna how how you gonna say on blah 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 when I am the label? It's like how you trying to eat at my table when I am the table? Mm. I was like, Oh Jesus, man. <laughs> it's crazy. I was thinking about it more in a different sense. Like yeah, I know. Yeah, was, <laughs> yours was more out of ten. Like darkatory. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hear all this. <laughs> this dip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but nah, we don't really treat anybody like that. Nah. The bit nah. is great. I love that we're always doing a bit. We just do the bit. It's fine. It's funny that we're talking about a bit on a pod and we're talking about metaphysics. Yeah, there are things beyond the things because everything everything has its intricacies and everything has its. I guess way to figure it out. Every problem can be solved. Yeah. Kind of. Is that, do you think that's true? If there's a problem, does it, it's like, did the answer Hom- come first or did the question come first? Homelessness is a problem that we haven't been able to solve. <laughs> <laughs> ever? <laughs> ever? <laughs> In history? I don't think so, yeah. Probably has, not. Has anybody ever Who solved knows? homelessness? What the Egyptians, what, what were they up to? We'll never know. Unfortunately. What the fuck were they doing? They, but they burned the library. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about pyramids and stuff <laughs> in my feet and I was like, <laughs> What the fuck's going on? Because every time we're also on these on these uh, mega mega mul- mul- mega multivitamins. Yeah. We, when we're, every time we're on that, I could see Egyptian hieroglyphics. And I was like, oh, there they are again. I'm not sure what that means at see? all. You see? What were they on? You see what I'm talking about, though, about this Derek Wolf shit? Like, why do you see hieroglyphics? I can't tell you. I can't guarantee that anyone else has ever seen hieroglyphics or will have to see hieroglyphics. Do you? Huh? Have you? Not like that, no. But I have heard it. I've heard people about seeing archetypical paintings like mm-hmm. archetypical sculptures that they'd never seen before like i think jordan peterson talked about he saw like a sculpture and then he had like, taken a mega multivitamin i think i don't know i don't know if i'm mixing up a story i don't want to get you too excited okay. but yeah i'm, I'm sure, already there i'm <laughs> sure he has i'm 100 percent sure he we has. need to interview him about that <laughs> yeah i'm 100 percent. i don't even know if we can handle the truth he's probably like boys sit down boys we're gonna talk I boys <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. More than anything in the world. More than anything in the world. Smother I'd be like me with the truth. <laughs> if he kills me, it's okay. I'll be. Dies, I'll be reborn. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. That's how I feel too. Um, 
Yeah, somebody. Wait, I, you say some, 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 said something about. I've seen two or three different stories about seeing like archetypical like um, paintings artistry? by like Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, okay. Like seeing stuff that's in the Sistine Chapel, mm-hmm. like when you're tripping, and then you go to the Sistine Chapel and you're like, "That's what I saw when I was tripping." I was seeing that. Thing. Like what the fuck? How I'd never seen that before, but like my brain drew drew that, and like uh, that's crazy. I think that's fucking crazy. That's insane. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like my back to my dad having this theory. Back to the that, Mandarin thing. Yeah, exactly. My dad's like the, you. The really the computer. It's like we're all <laughs> there's like a mass hard drive out there. Like okay. maybe it's all a simulation, but like a simulation is just an easier way to interpret what I'm going to say right now. Because like imagine the simulation is all tapped in from a computer at the backside, and it's like generating this whole simulation. But then like mm-hmm. you're being generated by the simulation too. But the, your code has backdoor access mm-hmm. to the computer. The simulation or the simulator itself? Yeah, the thing that's generating it. Yes, okay. And then with that, you can access the information that is being projected to the everything. Like there's people that are being projected Mandarin. It's just not you. But you can back, yes. you can go yeah, up yeah, your yeah, line yeah. and okay. you can tap into the Mandarin that's being sent to them and then like bring it into your like, Yeah, tap into the feed. Yeah. And then you You're now being fed Mandarin. Yes. Like you said almost. Yeah. And then now like that's in your realm of like what you can do with communication now. That's because crazy. yeah. And he was like, I kinda wanna like is, is anybody exploring that? Like, what the fuck? This is like the tenth case. This is the tenth case of that. How are we not And it's Mandarin? Every time. It seems Every like time. Mandarin. Me. Why? Why Mandarin? My dad says... My, I'd be my... kind of pissed. <laughs> After like a couple seconds of shock and all, I'd be like, why not Spanish, damn it? Why not, like, <laughs> why not French? What the fuck? I guess Mandarin is probably really, really popular. Is it the most popular language in the world? Yeah. There it is. That's why. That's probably I why. I knew it. Damn, you were in there. I didn't draw that conclusion either. Okay. But yeah, I remember that from school. I remember that from elementary school. I was like, English is... America, fuck yeah. What are America? Talking? What are you talking about? A pledge? <laughs> <laughs> what am I pledging? I thought I was pledging allegiance to number one. To number one? That's what I thought we were the Who's jersey you don't want to wear? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was like, no, Mandarin is like, China's fucking huge, little kid. China's fucking... I was just like, damn it, why not have something more more mass spread? And I was like, oh, that's probably the most mass spread thing, you idiot. <laughs> and I was also like, it's not useful to you here right now, but like in China, that would be super useful. I'd be lit. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be high. When I moved to China? <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be not be? We definitely have to go visit. I'd have to visit. Yeah, have to visit. I'd probably fuck people up. Just Dude, to be like, it'd be so fun. How many things? Murder it, dog. Just, yes. And I would hit people with full sentences. Yeah, you, you I give wouldn't them. give them a chance to be like, oh my gosh, is he speaking? No, I, I'd hit you with a full paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just give someone like a Jordan Peterson ass like metaphysics dagger. I hope you have an amazing day and the Lord blesses you a million times. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That'd be fire. I remember my dad was in France. My dad speaks fluent French like that. That's so lit. Like like that. Like uh, that. so he was like in France with my mom when I was like I don't even think I was born yet. Maybe I was a baby. I don't know. But he said it's like one of his all time stories. He likes to tell at a dinner party. He's like um, <laughs> he's like we get into the elevator and you know like I wasn't I wasn't like super out of shape but like yeah well, I've been overweight like my whole life and then this lady was like smoking her cigarette in the elevator and she's like something about um. This this American fat ass blah 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 in French yeah in French Ooh. and then my dad was just like uh, I may be fat but I can lose weight but you're a bitch and that's gonna last forever God so, so shit like that God that's not changing anytime soon I think is what he told her and um, just like stunned silence like <gasps> and then my dad just like walked off ding. Walked up the elevator like, fuck yeah, you, lady. That lady was in her second mask mode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, I could be... This This, this guy's on the outside, outside. He's, yeah. He's, he's, not, he's not in with my family. Like, my family speaks this language. He's mm. not part of my... Like, he's a, nah, he's a part of like... Or not like by blood family, but whatever. Yeah. My loyalty ties, we all speak this language. Whether yeah. it's Mandarin, English, French. And she was like, oh, he doesn't have access to this. Nah. And then it was like... Like she was in the shower. Yeah, for real. I'm exposed. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Got her. Got her. Your soul. Yes, bro. I love that. It's that, hilarious. That's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And then I think that's just like part of what, part of the reason that's one of my dad's favorite stories is not because he likes fucking bodying bullies. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pe- people do love bodying a bully or mm-hmm. like getting someone back. I like to see a bully get bodied. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sue me. Don't sue him. Don't sue me. But you get it. Mm-hmm. 
but the thing is, is I think that people like the nuance of like surprising somebody with like a hidden talent. Just be yeah, like, oh, sure. you thought, you fucking thought, but I, <laughs> yeah. and then you do it, and then that's like a great like people love that. So I think you would want to go to China just to like, yeah. Fuck some people up, that'd pretty be, much. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, but then you probably couldn't like relish in it too much because it'd be like it'd probably get old. Really it'd get fast. old. It would probably it probably get old. But it'd probably be a really useful skill. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. It might just be. But that's crazy that it's Mandarin. But it makes sense that it's Mandarin. I guess that might be the easiest string to tap into because yeah, it's it, the most like given signal from the generating simulator in this. It's like, what are you looking for language, bitch? Here's some language. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just like gives you the rattles your fucking language chamber, and it's like uh, the easiest one yeah. for now until I get to recalibrate you later. And I think if I had to it's guess, like, uh, a glitch, right? That's what I, that's what I think it is. Mm. I think when you, you get your head rocked and your it's brain like reboots, fucking, like you're, and then someone's like yanks out the the, 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 the Ethernet cable. Yeah, and when no, <laughs> <laughs> your soldier just <laughs> <laughs> he's just like in place, like not, not going anywhere. And then I think so. My my theory is that when that cord gets plugged back in, there's a rebooting sequence for your brain. And then in that rebooting sequence, it's like, vroom, vroom, vroom. and the first thing it does is it throws you the most common language. It's like default. Default. Yeah, you, you buy an iPhone in America, English. Yes, <laughs> it's got a default, and then like slowly your personality loads back in, mm-hmm. and then but the, but then your conscious version of yourself loads back in before your language center does. In these certain cases. Maybe it wasn't like that before doctors could bring people out of subconscious states. Maybe, like, it was intended when we were bodies that it would, like, we'd have to wake all the way up before you'd be able to talk again. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, so, like, yeah, like, the the medical advancements have allowed us to do that at a faster rate than, like, naturally the reboot process is supposed to take. It's supposed to take an X amount of time, but we, like, halved it with medical advancement. Yeah. And it's a super rare. It's also super rare because we've only seen, like, 10 cases in, like, 10 years. People get hit in the head all the time. Uh Uh-huh. I imagine a lot of boxers get hit in the head, yeah, head all the time. Everyone who fights, but it's not like it's not a common motif in fighting that motherfuckers wake up speaking sh- Mandarin. Have you heard one Joe Rogan story about that? Oh, uh, I don't. Maybe I haven't. I, I can't cite one. I'm sh- he may have. I haven't listened. I don't. I don't typically listen to the MMA ones, and they're and where in those he might he might. Hit. Yeah, I don't think maybe, but I don't think so because I listen so. to some of those. Okay, and it's not like it's definitely not something he brings up often. It's not a joke it's not that people make. Thing. Yeah, it's not like a thing. Yeah, he's like, he's gonna come back speaking Mandarin. Yeah. Like, like, everyone's like, ah. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so it's not a reference point in culture at all. It is for us now. Yeah, for real. Because, yeah. It's be- the default. Because That's my crazy. dad was kind of like linking it back to the, so far. the simulation theory, like, um, implications mm-hmm. that it has. That, like, maybe when people are taking these psychedelics, and I don't think he drew this, but he just said there are implications. And when I thought about the implications of that, I was thinking, like, when we take the psychedelics, we're tapping into, like, Maybe knowledge. <laughs> Sorry, mega multivitamins. We're tapping into the, the the mainframe. Yeah, or like uh, certain restriction ports get lifted, and you're mm. able to like go into like the Ministry of Magic in Harry Potter. Whereas like you used to be like a Muggle, and now yeah. like you're on the inside of like the inner workings of how they govern you're, magic. You're moving through walls and shit. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck is this? Teleporting like it's nothing. Yeah, and I think um, within that, it's like supposed to. It's introspective for a reason. It's like, oh, this is how things work. It's like that's why that thing is happening like that, so that you can be like back you in. See the code. Yeah, and, and you're just like, yeah, you can take your objective mind because we're all swayed by our emotions and our feelings and all of our bullshit all the time. It's like you take your oh, yeah. objective mind into like what's actually going on, and then make you feel it emotionally too. And you're just like, oh, I don't want to be like that. But when you're just in like regular life, you're like doing that thing all the time. You, you know what I'm saying? There's different shit yeah, yeah, attached yeah, yeah, to yeah. that behavior. <laughs> you're just beat booping, as I, as I would describe it. Yeah, just beat booping through it. You like you don't. A lot of times I didn't understand like why I was being late to work all the time. That's a good example for sure. Like just for me specifically, like you slow down, guy. <laughs> hey man, we're recording a podcast here. Jesus, chill out, guy. That guy's trying not to be late to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate the feeling of rushing too. I didn't. I used to be speeding around everywhere. Dangerous. Always being late everywhere. Mm-hmm. All of that feels it's the bad. Less is less. Yeah. Yes, like you're smoking a cigarette. <sighs> you're trying to get there on time and you're speeding to get there. You could get pulled over. It's more dangerous, like literally. All of that, your vibration is just lower. You're fucking yourself up. Whereas like if I wake up on time and I get on the road and I give myself up, like an extra 10 or 15 minutes so I can drive slow and listen to music and like find the music I want to listen to and like enjoy the drive and then be there early, all of that is better. All of it feels so much better. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, so if I'm on super mega multivitamins, I feel that. I'm like, oh shit. I want to be smoking a cigar, taking my time. I don't want to be 
<laughs> running late. It's fucking so different. Big difference. So big, different. Big diff energy. Yeah. And then, but then what's going on with me is I'm not like, in the in the regular life, it's like you need to take initiative. Like, get the ball rolling. Start mm-hmm. moving towards your objective. Set myself up in advance. Like, the night before, I'm packing bags and I'm doing laundry and I'm getting my breakfast sorted out. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Like, there's like a, I wasn't, when you're when I'm doing those things and I'm actively taking, like, responsibility for the day and for this task that i want to take care of Mm -hmm. it happens yeah it fucking happens but then like i didn't have the ability to take responsibility for it until i could see it like that which might make me a bitch to be honest i don't know i I think we all have stuff like that we all we all have blinders on stuff yes and it's 100 percent. everyone everyone has their constraints yeah for sure and it's tight it's tight seeing the code because okay so now Okay, we've addressed like almost all the nuances, but this is the part I want to get to the most. Okay. Derek Wolf was tapping into his like Viking roots and being the best run stopper in the NFL. As he describes it, he's like, they would put two 270-pound motherfuckers on me. Their job is to destroy me, and then I would destroy them, and I would tackle Derek Henry for a loss. That was why I would be like, I'm going to kill everybody. I'm the demonio. You're worried about at night. I'm the boogeyman. I'm the like, boogeyman. That like that energy is because he was doing such an impossible task, but it was also synchronistic with what exactly he felt like his whole energy and body was put on here on earth to do. Yeah. And that thing is crazy to me because I want to channel that in our lives. And I like doing the the I guess it's happening then by channel channeling that and that being like your like ancestral root or like your maybe like the truest like if reincarnation is a thing or like tapping into I guess the idea of who you are as a trans trans time trans dimensional being. Yes, I think that's that's interesting as fuck to maximize mm-hmm. the full expression of you now. In this version, your your Matthew. In yes, this version, but like. That thing who's behind Matthew, who's operating and animating Matthew, may have been here for who? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what you were doing. Like, because <laughs> also, it's also at a bare minimum, if it's not reincarnation, it is your parents. It is your grandparents. You come from somewhere. It is your great grandparents. Like that. That like there was DNA that like went through all of that, and it's in you now. Yes. And, and that thing's going to continue to go through you to the next one. The surviving DNA, whichever made it through. Yeah. The survivor, bro. You're a survivor. For real. It's crazy to think about. And that's like an operating part of this narrative of life that's going on. Is like there's, I think like if you're 200,000, maybe it's, let's say like your lineage could legitimately go like 2,000 years ago or 8,000 years ago. I don't know when the fuck people started evolving. I don't know how far you could trace someone's life. How far you go back? Because yeah, you had to be given birth to. Right. That person had to be given birth to, and that process had to go all the way back to I know, forever ago? Like 1400s Rome? Right. Yeah! Right? Right! Literally, like, it has to. It's like I'm trying to prove it in court. I have to say different <laughs> words. But just talking with you, it has to go back forever, right? It has to. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So like, it, it's in you still. Yeah, so if you were, like, a fisherman back then, or, like, you caught salmon back then, like, your ability to, like, see... Like quickly move your eyes. Mm-hmm. I think that thing transfers through you. Yes, I think that also like is the same or like a, a, a truth in that with like your diet as well. Like where were your ancestors eating? Like how do they nourish themselves? Yes, because my body were like where are you from? I, they, what, what, what can you grow where you're from? You could probably you're probably best like wherever your ancestors are from. You probably your body probably digests. I would guess you, your body digests the food from those places that grow in those places most commonly. Back in before we had grocery stores and shit, you know, so you had true. to make your make your food. Like that's all you had to do, or that's all you could do. Oh, you to could live. Do. Yeah, all you could do. <laughs> whatever you can raise or catch or kill or whatever. Yeah, I think that's crazy because now that I think about DNA. it, like rice and fish. Like makes Kendrick my... Lamar talks about that. I got, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> right as we broke pre-shift on the last work shift I had, one of my favorite managers just like I'm like walking down the stairs and he's just like dashed me up. He's like, I got, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> oh my bad, <laughs> you were there for me, and I was just like. <laughs> Just like, all right, let's go in. <laughs> Fucking dog. Yes. Like, uh, that shit was hitting for me for sure. And I thought about that. I was like, yeah, bro, I got so much shit on my DNA that fucking, like, my DNA. dude, my ancestors were, yeah, all, all of our ancestors like, made it. Yeah. And like 1600 years ago, you had to build a fire, live outside. 
Kill fucking wolves. And kill I'm not wolves. sure if I can kill Cosmo back to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, It'd be a tough fight. It'd be a close one. Man. But our ancestors had to deal with that shit. No, yes, you could. Yes, you could snap his neck. I think, yes. I, could, I, think I could do it. He's yes. like, okay, for reference. No, I'm like, no one knows. No one has any idea. But he's like around like 70 pounds. Yeah. He's 70 like, pounds. He's like a he, black lab, like pit looking mix. Yeah, he's a soft 70 pounds because he's I a think, baby. No, but I think like if he turned up the intensity all the way though. Yeah, that's why we give, we're giving him like, clout. It's because he's like a... He's like fucking. He's beefy. Stacked. He's a beefy. He looks like a linebacker. Yeah. Me and my girlfriend were talking about him in a past life because, like, <laughs> potentially, who knows? I was like, was he? Maybe was he? A, was he a human? Was he a human? Or like, maybe he was always my dog. Or you know, saying like, yeah. like the spirit of your dog. Yeah, I'm believing in that idea right? more and more. You know, what I'm saying I was yeah. like, or maybe I was his dog. Could have been. <laughs> Who's to say I'm the human all the time? I, I want to switch the roles up a little bit, have a different life, a different existence experience For instead sure. of just human all the time. I want to be a dog sometimes. I bet his life is awesome. Seriously? <laughs> I take care of him well. His yeah. life is just chilling. He doesn't worry about shit. I kind of envy that. I remember talking about that at the very beginning. Yeah. I kind of envy that about him because he's always chilling. Yeah. But I love I love that guy. But I, I'm not sure if I could take him out. He turned it up all the way. I, there, I think... There's another thought in there I lost. <laughs> that Cosmo's crazy. Oh, but if I was his dog in another lifetime, my girlfriend and I were talking about that. And like, yeah, we we're just spitballing. I think he looks like a linebacker. Yeah. I was like, I think... He was a linebacker for Nick Saban in another lifetime, <laughs> and I was his dog. It it it's crazy because I think when I think about the salmon fisherman having better eyes, and then I think about the great 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 granddaughter of that person, like being a pilot, like that shit. I think that your life brings you opportunities. You. Yes, like we're talking about the music. Yes, it pulls you into things that you would be tailored for. It's like, oh, this is gonna be. This there's is gonna. A lot of, there are a lot of strings pulling you. Yeah, I think we're puppets at some point, or not at some point, at, to some degree. For Pinocchio alludes to that. Until you're not. That's the thing. You do get to a blank state where you're like kind of open to everything. Like the the, the fortune takes some development. One of the fortune cookie already. things we saw was like be open to like whatever invites you to it. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like that's just true. That hits for people because you get to that place where you want to get drawn to something. And then I think it's like the. The God's plan is <clears throat> this nuance is going to hit so crazy for you. You have no clue how much you're going to love this nuance. But, like, you're specifically going to love this nuance because it's going to hit for you because you were always someone who was, like, a visual killer. And, like, there's things that other people won't enjoy out of this that you will enjoy out of this. Yeah, they're not good at it. They won't enjoy it. Nah. But then, lose, lose. But the, I think the ideal thing is, like, the the – what's it called? Natural selection? Uh-huh. makes it so that like by now all of the dnas that got through at this point we're all like hyper competent we should be you're kind of like fucking yourself up if you're not able to handle life right now because Point you up. got through like Point up, please. <laughs> you got through so much harder shit so much longer ago we had so much more to deal with so much harder i guess people say talk about like that the scaling they, they flip it on its head it's like people like kids these days deal with so much you know what I'm saying? i guess like in terms of like social media or whatever that's a whole nother thing they do, but it, it's they do. it's a different kind of hard. It's a different kind of because like you could just put it down. Killing animals and being hunted by the campfire. You can't put that down. That's a little different. <laughs> That's a little different. That's like happening. Like yeah, for that real. happened. That happened. <laughs> like motherfuckers for sure would be just like dead. Like dude, we lost somebody last night. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a big fucking deal. There are times when I get like when I when I I think I was talking to you about this before, but there are times when I don't take my vitamins every day, and then if I take a vitamin. Like later on, or like mistime the scheduling of them, I get like a super vitamin effect. <laughs> and like there was a time where I was like spacing out my vitamins between like I would take a vitamin once every two weeks, once every two weeks, and I get like super smacked with a vitamin effect. Ooh. And like in that place, oh man, I think because I I could feel in that place like the uh, oh man I lost it because we were talking what we were talking about right before that the dog the dog after the dog. I love that this happens to Joe Rogan too. It makes me feel not so bad. <laughs> it happens all the time. It'll come back. It always does come back. But there's definitely an effect that's increased after you if you don't take it. And then whenever you do take it, it's definitely like a it's like a micro dose, more or less, is kinda of how I feel about it. But I was gonna bring you that point up to point it to something else that we were just talking about. Like life kinda of draws you places. Mm. I don't know, it'll come back around for you. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah. I think that there's like um that's why I like taking the psychedelics too. The super multivitamin? <laughs> the mega multivitamin. The mega multivitamin. <laughs> a lot of editing in this podcast. I'm still working on the vocabulary. <clears throat> the mega multivitamin. Because they point you in that same direction. It's a directing force. Like, 
there is an optimal solution for you. Yeah. Like, you'd be better at this and worse at that. Like, do this, do this. Like, go this way. This shit will be work out for Natural you. Natural selection is trying to win, win, win. Mmm, that's crazy. For sure. To propagate forward the best DNA to do the best, the most, or the, the thing that it's supposed to do. Yeah. You're, so, and you're so, your role in the animal kingdom. It's only weeding out people that won't pers- participate in the win, win, win. Mm. Which is okay to some degree. We don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of harsh, but yeah. I mean, like, we want to give them literally every opportunity. We of want course, to, yes. We yeah, want to give yeah, them yeah. so much opportunity that they're allowed to be maleficent to us. And then we could still be wrong and then still go back and invite them to the party and try again. But ultimately, we don't want it around. Mm. No. Nah. If you won't participate in the win-win-win. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy the DNA is going all the way through. Who knows how that truly works? No one really does. No one can tell you with certainty, really. Nah. They didn't even know what DNA I guess was. Within, within a degree, they can. They're like, oh, yeah, these, these chromosomes. And like, like the, I guess there's like a, like, you just you could study at a university, but what are you studying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They didn't even know what it was until like the 60s, I think. In genetics and shit. Yeah, I heard someone say that like there was two scientists trying to figure it out. And then the person that they thought for sure was going to figure it out was like an accredited, like super intelligent, hyper, like fair researcher. And they were like, she's definitely going to get it. And the other dude was kind of like a crackpot. And he was like... And trying to figure out what exactly? Like what the shape of DNA was. Like what it like... How it could be what it is and like what it would look like to support that. Hmm. Like what... Like trying to identify what DNA was. And then they fi- the, the crackpot dude figured out it was a double helix. Hmm. Because it wasn't through the standard train of thought that everyone was trying to like... It's like, it's like this, but it doesn't quite work, but it's something like this. And he was like... It's upside down and spinning. <laughs> and they were like, no, no. And then they're like, fuck, it is. And then like, that's, but that was only like 30 years ago. Really? Yeah. Jesus. I guess we're 2023, we so like 60 years ago. What do we know about anything? Golly. It's crazy. <laughs> what do we know about Jack Dilly, bro? Oh, man. It's crazy. University, I love university. Or the idea of university is like, you can't knock that. Someone trying to learn something that's we're all trying to learn something we all are learning something whether or not whether whether we're willingly participating we are learning something every day <laughs> that's true you actually learn it and actually learn like it's like school so you can go to school but like not not be able to do the homework or like you know say like you're not paying attention in class that's i think tough. life is like that it's intentionally designed for you to learn something every day i think you can learn how to how to because i guess the question is how do i exist that's like the you exist. I'm sorry. It's like, okay, well, how do I do that? That's like the first question. <laughs> how should I do that? I guess we are kind of looking to our parents to tell us that, right? Mm-hmm. Whether or looking not. for examples, and then we're, yeah, we're just osmosis. Jones in over here. It's like, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> and then we kind of aspire to do what our parents did. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, I've definitely been in a phase of my life where I'm trying to recreate what my parents were doing when life was optimal as a kid. Mm. And then I was quickly like, Oh, this is just like playing house. Like that's all I'm doing right now. Like I think they were doing other stuff, but I'm just playing house, trying to recreate what it was like when I was a kid and they were the adults. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. And it's like now I need to like be doing shit. I need to like have my own missions and shit like that. Figure out like what the fuck, because like a house is just a house. Like or it's also not. It's also not. A house could be a palace. A house can be a palace for sure. A shack could be a palace. But in my opinion, it was like once I had like what I thought was. Like a running house show, I was just like, okay, all I was doing was like building a home, which is like good and dope, but I need to like, I, there's more to be done here. What's jo- going on in this house? Job's not finished. Yeah, what what is this house built for? What am I trying to do? What's within- the, what, what goes on in here? Yeah, and then that's where I started like branching out into making more music and like doing more stuff like that because it was like, okay, now I have like this place that's rocking, but it's not going to make sense unless I'm like have a career that this like hosts. It's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. what is this room for? And then like building the room around what it's for rather than. Just like building a room and then like existing in it and be like, okay, yeah. I guess this is life. Jesus. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. And I like, I love that because I think yeah, a lot of people just do that or like uh, setting, not setting the intention fully, mm-hmm. and like uh, or like not thinking about what the room is for before just, just like, oh yeah, just build it, you know, just make it happen to I guess not run with the Joneses or keeping up with the Joneses, but because I guess yeah, to, to fill whatever or like uh, to not not play house, but like. And whatever the thing they're doing, like, this is a part of the game that I'm playing. It's like, well, what? Like, why? It's like, or maybe they haven't developed the, uh, 
second ability. Of course, like there's one thing to have a house just by itself, and like just for the sake of having a house and trying to get a big house and trying to like live that narrative out. Yeah, because some people never had a home, so yeah. it's like they want to have a home. Yeah, I want to have a home. Yeah, like, I feel that. You know, yeah, for sure. But and, but and there's like a, like doing with intention. You know what I'm saying? With like I don't know, maybe a, maybe more a deeper gratitude, a more deeper understanding, and appreciation. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if that's like literally what your intent is, is to build a home. Like that's appreciative. That's dope. Mm. It's like, I, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't, I could be like, I'm happy in this house. Like the, the, in my current house, it's just kind of going sideways. We don't own it, but like, uh, the foundation is getting a little wobbly. <laughs> so we have some people coming in trying to fix it or trying to level the house and such. But like yeah, right now is not an optimal time for the, the house health. The, it's a little joys, cracked and creaky. The joys of home ownership. So the part, part, part of me is like, oh, thank God I don't own it. <laughs> so I kind of love it more. <laughs> But like I'm content with this. I could live like you know, like I could. I, I'm I'm fine. Yeah, I have everything I need. Even when I was in my apartment by myself, like I'm fine. Like I'm very. I'm like a minimalist. I'm I'm chill. But like, I think that I could still carry that into the. Or you can carry that in like. Uh, I guess that that individual like I'm good right here. Like you don't need a big mansion for that. Some people are trying to find something in that, or like mm. you know, in tr- I guess people are trying to find something in trying to live out whatever narrative that is. Buying the big house, buying the big yes. truck, having the side chick or whatever. Yeah, no, you're right. You're dead on. Mm. That's what I was trying to do too. Is I was trying to pursue the peace and love that I felt when I was a kid, and also like my family split up, so I was just tr- still trying to restore that. Mm. I had to like move on from that, like eventually, you know, and like start living my life. Yeah. But like for a while, I think because it ties back to the question, which is like, you said the first question is like, how do how I do you, exist? How do you exist? How should I do this? And then my first thought was like, well, I remember when things were good. It's like I had like my dad had a job and then they like watched Saturday Night Live on Saturdays and like watched like, you know, fucking like house in the office and stuff after they got home from work and we all ate dinner. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, Hell's Kitchen. I remember that. I saw that at your house one time. Yeah, my mom was always trying to like put on TV and then eat dinner and then like watch that and like make some cookies because we have like company over. And then we all just hang out in the living room for a while and then we'd go play video games till we fell asleep. Like that's pretty much. That's lit. It wasn't a bit of a good life. It's a good life. You got a good life. But when I was trying to figure out how to exist, I chased that feeling. And then I was kind of just like, what am I doing here? Like, I realized that there was something missing. It was like, uh, it's also like, it's not, some of the best things in life come as a consequence of pursuing higher meaning. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, pursue higher meaning and then you need a home. Like, you need a house. Like, have a house. You need to live somewhere. Yeah. Li- put your shit somewhere, yeah, just, kid. <laughs> just put your shit somewhere and make it as nice as you can. I have a good save but, point. But the intent is like you're trying to do this thing. And then like the consequences of you doing that thing, the higher purpose thing, like it, my mom was like doing other shit. But like us, we enjoyed the fallout. Like sometimes I see Gabby enjoying just like playing Fortnite and chilling. And like it's a nice drizzly day outside. And like mm-hmm. we have like a runner going on, like we're shooting a podcast today. And I remember being on the other side of the curtain of like other people had stuff going on, and I was chilling. Yeah, see, yeah, seeing jazz, I'm like the same thing. Yeah, same right. Thing. Yeah, I remember being you. I remember being you so much. And it's nice, like uh-huh. it's cool to it's cool on both sides, you know. Yeah, being on that side of the fence, being like, oh man, I remember. Yeah, I know what you. I know that. I know that you see what you see, and I know that you have no idea what you really are seeing. Yeah, because <laughs> I was I was you, and I was like. There's a mom and the parents. Here we go. I'm going to school. It's crazy. It's crazy. Get his beep open. Yeah, for real. Just doing. I was aspiring about the day I was going to be. You're you're just like the parents and like, yeah, the family just masks all or not all. So much of the complexity. Yeah. The true complexity of life. Of what's going on. Masked. It's like hidden from you until you're like venturing out on your own. And you're just like, holy shit. People are fucked up. Yeah. People don't share my values. <laughs> That's so crazy. I'll, not everybody is trustworthy. Yeah. Not everybody People are snakes. Yeah, not everybody wants to see me win. You gotta be careful out here. It's crazy. Cause yeah, I definitely go into a lot of situations thinking everyone has good intention. And then you find out like they're strangers. I think that's a good, good way to be. That is the best way to be. But it's better to know you're being choose that the, way. Choose to be that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't be ignorantly. Then, then you're being a goof. You're a doormat. And that's bad. Yeah. Yep. Different. No, sir. So, yeah, that's the thing is that there was a lot of the, like, for instance, going on road trips with my dad. I went on a ton of road trips with my dad because his job, like, had to take us a lot of different places. And then if I just, like, went on a road trip. Is being a software developer? No, being a pastor. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Like, no, no, you're good. But just, like, also, you wouldn't think that was a road tripping type job. But, like, mm-hmm. we did have to drive a lot to, um, like. Yeah, go- you wouldn't think that. No. You'd think it'd be just, like, going to church on Sunday. Yeah. 
but we went to go visit people like all the time that were in different parts of Texas and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. then like we, 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 my dad would do like funerals for people, but like sometimes they'd have the funeral like in Oklahoma one time. So we like drove to Oklahoma together. Jesus. Yeah. Um, That's not short. Nah, but it was like those, a lot of my best memories of my dad are like in the car, like listening to a podcast or listening to an audio book or like listening to him have a phone conversation where I was just like watching him be an adult. Watching him exist, like knowing you're there, but like you're not, he's not like, you're, you're good. You yeah. So he doesn't have to worry about you right now. You're like, he's like, okay, he's doing Jonathan. You're like as an uh, objective observer almost. Yeah. Fly and on the wall. He's just like, we got a code. Like, don't, don't talk about the fuck we're talking about. Like, okay. And I was like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, like, didn't have to really talk about that anymore. That was, like, one time. And I was just like, okay, bet. Like, mm-hmm. just, yeah. He's like, you're cool. I'm cool. We're cool. All right, I got to do some shit. And then goes into, like, work mode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got to be the Jonathan that these people know. Yeah, facts. <laughs> and uh, and that was cool to watch. It was cool to watch, like, an adult being an adult. I was like, yeah. damn, this motherfucker's getting shit done. Like, this, yeah. is, this is wild. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> He's and, popping uh, off. Let's go, But pop. that was all a consequence of him pursuing higher meaning. It's like, all of those dope experiences and dope memories and like all the some of the things i cherish the most were like just a consequence of a push for this thing up here you can't like want to have a nice movie night so you build your whole life around having nice movie nights you buy the big t you buy the <laughs> fuck a 72 we're gonna 90 we're gonna, i'll make the house bigger fuck em. i'll move i'll move say i won't say i won't bitch i'll build my life around this movie night right. i'll die on this movie night <laughs> I think it's, it's a bad like, attitude to adopt. Yeah, no. But I, I'm sorry. Like, I kind of like, we do the bit, but I kind of like take things to the extreme to see how funny it is. Like, yeah, right. You know, to see how wrong it is. All right, it is. Yeah. Like, extreme this way, extreme that way. What's like the most, where do I, what do I think like the, the true. Because I was going to say, some people is. do get, some people are the host. Like, Steve is like, we'll That's build a bigger house. I love <laughs> I'll move. <laughs> this living room is not quite gonna fit three TVs yeah. on or Sunday. Like whenever uh, Ricky, one of our uh, coworkers, he was like, "Yeah, part of the things I think about when I look at apartments is the parking. Hopefully, there's free guest parking, visitor parking. Don't have to worry about getting towed. And uh, I guess what was the other thing? proximity to work? Oh no, how how it's gonna look for a Christmas party? Yeah, that was what it was. I was like, it's not work at <laughs> he all. Built his apartment around the hosting thing. Yeah, that's not... pure intention. I yeah, know, I guess I don't know the full full extension, but it, I went to the party and it was a great time. Yeah. It yeah, so, so maybe the the so house fun. party isn't quite exactly. Fun, like you're never gonna look back on your life and be like, man, I wish I didn't have as much fun as I did. I wish yeah. I had less fun. Well, maybe you might. I don't know. Some people maybe do. I worked harder. Maybe I wish I worked harder. Why was I always having so much fucking fun? Yeah, <laughs> I'm more scared of that. I'm way more scared of the saying I work too hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, my my aim set is set too high because yeah. it's difficult to work hard. It is not difficult to have fun. That's why I'm like, mm, it's way more likely that I'm gonna say I didn't work maybe as hard. I have, like the right kind of fun. Fun in the right way. True, right. true enjoyment. Yeah, not like true joy. Gluttonous fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel that. Like true I'm joy. I'm gonna smash a tray of Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's awesome. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Playing video games for twelve hours straight and just knocking down this Chick Fil A sandwich at the Chick Fil A sandwich. <laughs> That's the best. That would be the best. I would love my life. Oh my god! If you gave, dude, I played a quick. This quick is not even a joke. <laughs> I played twenty four hours of RuneScape in college, my freshman year. Twenty four hours, and I was like, Ryan, what? my roommate, have you ever played? Because we were talking about playing games for a long time. I was like, man, I played Call of Duty for eight hours, nine, ten hours. I was like, have you ever played a game for twenty four hours? He's like, I don't think so. I was like, I don't think I have either. Like, I think I want to fucking do that. <laughs> What an aim. What an aim to Why? take. You see that sky? You see that shooting star? Yeah. I think I catch it. I'm going to touch it. <laughs> Why? What? This tight. It's so this... random. But yeah, it's like a kind of wrong fun. That was like an irresponsible fun. But that was like the right time to have irresponsible fun. Yeah. Games are silly. That's what I was going to say. I was like, really? What else would you have done? Like, you needed to come up with silly games to pass Better the time. Better than going out and fucking getting slaughtered. Yeah, for in sure. Getting <laughs> For sure, hundred percent. Wasting, you're wasting. It. I'm, well, I don't want to shit on drinking, but if you, it's like there's a wrong way to do it for sure. Yeah, and if you think about it for your games, you were working out, so like yeah, yeah, that was a big, big uh, motivating factor into the not pursuing like going out and drinking all the time. Yeah, I was trying to work. I was trying to become that person. Yeah, a hundred percent. And good on you. Like God, I can't even think about that. Thank God that kid kept going. Yeah, for real. Thank God that kid kept going. So anytime you didn't go out drinking, but you just like stayed on your diet, that was better for sure for your body. So definitely. But I agree that 
Right time to have irresponsible fun. Perfect lineup. Mm. Trying to build build life around a movie night, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Yeah. That's really the everything. Is like sometimes anybody's behavior could seem like the wrong behavior. But sometimes it's the right time for them to do something that it would be the wrong time for you to do. And yeah, I, you don't have access to the whole the whole plethora of just information that's out there. The truth. Yeah. The truth. The truth. The truth is truth. I think there's like three sides to the story. Or like the, your side, my side, and the truth. Yeah. It's like your interpretation and my interpretation are not the same thing. And like the truth is like we're trying to say, no, mine is like mine's the most mine's the most accurate depiction of the truth. For sure. You're like that is a lot of not so fast. <laughs> I have That's an error. That's an error. That's an error. That's a... No. Th- that's three a lot things. of what goes on here. Three that's separate a, things. That's a lot of what goes on in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. It's just like pre- presentation of narrative. You been watching a little bit? No, I okay. just know. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I was, I, uh, we'll talk about it in more in depth. I'll get in there. I'll get in there. Okay, I'll get in there. <laughs> There's no rush. There's no rush. Yeah, true. I'm just like that. Just bring up Game of Thrones real quick. Like that's crazy. That to me, it's crazy. I don't even want to be grossly miss miss out of con- oh, your phone. But the uh, I was gonna check just to see when did George R. R. Martin start writing Game of Thrones because I want to say he started writing them in like. The 1990s. I was going to say 1991. Two thousands at the latest. Like, it was early. And that shit's still not done. That shit's still not done. It's the best best way to do it. And I just, uh, it breaks my heart that HBO, I guess, uh, it breaks my heart that that show has the stigma of like, oh, they had a shitty ending. It's because like, ah, it could have been so great. It was going in such a great direction. Whoa. And then HBO kind of just like, hmm. I guess HBO kind of had, a, what were they going to do? What, what could they have done? Because they got to the point where in which they crossed the the book threshold. They were further on in the book series than the author had actually gone. It's like the movies were trying to keep on making Harry Potter 6 and Harry Potter 7, but like she'd only written up to the fifth book. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tapped in. He began the first volume of the series, A Game of Thrones, in 1991. Published in 1996. Tapped in. My God, guy. It's older than us. It's older than us. That and it's is... still not done. He's not even... He still has two books to go. Two books to go. You think it's because he wants it to be perfect? I don't know. Do you think the... he always knew it was going to take over? I don't know. I don't know what's going Maybe on. Maybe it's just that. a perfect story. Maybe he's just like not done. He's like, like, it's hard to end. <laughs> like, dude. I, he like... I don't want to say he lost my fanship, but like he lost like the... I guess within a, within a fanship of somebody, you're like... Part of that fanship is being anticipate, anticipating... The drop. I want the drop. I want yeah. the drop. And now I've gone so far without the drop that I'm uh, like, he's never dropping it. Uh-huh. And even if he does, like... Uh, I trusted you. I trusted you for so long. I trusted you. And I stood up for you. Yeah, we're At in At the Jersey. point when HBO started going past, I was like, no. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> don't you dare. You stop it. And I knew it was going to be terrible. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, why... why uh, okay. Uh, Okay. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. I didn't watch it for the longest time. Eventually, I did. I finished it, but like. But you held yourself true to George R. R. Martin. Yeah, yeah. I I, I waited years till, until I watched it because I was like, I'm not. I don't want to even. Yeah, what I perceive what Game you, of Thrones to yeah. be is what he writes. You were telling, me. yeah, you telling me his story is not him telling me his story. Yeah, you I guys want him to tell me his story. Facts. I don't want that second hand. And he's just holding off, breaking yeah, your heart. Why? I wonder why. We have no idea what George R. R. Martin, the author, is going through in life. I don't know. Who could? But 1991 guy? It's not like... <laughs> How long, like 32 years? What could you be... How long has it been since the last book release? Uh, that's a good question, too. Look, I think it's called uh, A Dance with Dragons. It's book five, and there's going to be, it's, it's a seven, I guess I'm not even sure how people knew it was a seven book series. Maybe that was like kind of the, initially his plan going forward, just when he started it, and that was kind of like a known thing. But he's up to five, so he, there's still two to go. And like, yeah, the fifth one I want to say was released in like 2008. One more guess. 2009. Eleven. Ah, oh, eleven. You're right there. In that ballpark. <laughs> right there. Still. Though. 2011. So 2011. Twelve years. Twelve ago. years ago. That's a long time, dog. But also, it blew the fuck up. He did the whole show, so that was gonna take some time. He wrote a whole ending that no one liked. I don't think he wrote that ending. I thought he was writing the last season. I don't think so. That sucks. Someone else was writing the last season. That made no sense to me either. Yeah, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Why? It's Why? not your story. I don't know. They, they, they took some creative liberties, I'm sure. And who knows? Because I even in the books, though, there's like there's so much depth in the books that like they don't even talk about. And like, or like there's like some characters that aren't even in the show. 
really? that like are in the books that like could be like potentially within the next two books they could be like oh shit like something could happen with them damn they could be like a main character or like have an influence into the narrative like <laughs> like in the book that's crazy it's crazy it's crazy but it's a shame Game of Thrones is still good though. I still, I, I was, I was still giving it a watch. I was still giving it a watch. Much like Game of Thrones won't end, this podcast won't end either. We no, definitely went over. It never won't. It's okay. <laughs> That's just how we do things right here. I guess so. We just want to give you talk more. To you forever, what bro. are we gonna do? Give the, we gotta upgrade. I can talk to you forever. I love you, bro. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> I don't even know if this one was good. I, I think we went in there sometimes. Yeah. I hope yeah. you enjoy the pod. Yeah. Either way, have a great rest of your day. Start of your day. End of your day. Love it. Get a bucket. Get a bucket. Get a, get a fucking bucket. bucket. And if you want to sleep, sleep. That's a bucket. <laughs> I love you guys. Love you. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might go. I just took the switch. I'm in my.